So the DYSG Awards are this weekend. It really came about me just thinking that I was going to hop on live one day and just have a conversation with some of my people, you know, asking questions like, yo, who had the hot cosplay this year or what video game couldn't y'all stop playing? Or what was the hot show that was always being mentioned, you know? And then I thought, you know, why don't we just have an award show for that sort of a thing? So myself and a few others got together and we picked nominations based on certain criteria and we created the DYSG Awards. It's going to be voted on by the people. Thank you all for who, who have voted so far. It's going to be a good thing, man. And hopefully this grows and continues to grow into this large geek culture event that will span from generation to generation. You know, I would love to see certain creators come up like, yo, I want to get the DYSG Award this year for Best Writer. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be pretty cool. But this weekend, the DYSG Awards, live on Instagram, pull up. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nix. Welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest as far as news and reviews inside of the geek realm. Thank you all for listening. Shout out to all the new subscribers, new followers, new friends and family. What is up? And if you are an avid listener, welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast bringing to y'all live from Spreaker. Shout to Spreaker. That's the home team. That's the family. Shout to Spreaker. But wherever you get your podcast, please be sure to listen to Do You Speak Geek and please subscribe. Do You Speak Geek dot com central hub for everything DYSG merchandise is available. Still got that blur day merch popping. So please be sure to watch that and uh you know, copy yourself something nice. Get something for the family. We got Christmas ornaments, people. It's not too late. Get yourself something nice. Follow us on social media, Facebook at DYSGFB, Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets, and Instagram and TikTok at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel, the only place where you can find the Daddy and Donald show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications, and leave comments. We want to know what you guys think. Y'all already know we got new videos coming next year, so please keep an eye out for that. Pretty big uh, event happened this week, so we're going to talk about that in the upcoming stories and reviews. But before we do that, let's do what we do about this time, people. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me. All right, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire, the Halo single player campaign. It's exactly what this series needed. It brings out the best in Master Chief's unique and satisfying combat style while leveraging old ideas to create new memorable ones. The story falls short for both new and veteran players, but it was a six year worth the wait. As a guy who is a Sony fan through and through, this is the title that I would definitely buy an Xbox for. Check this out. Don't Look Up, a bleak commentary on humanity's failure to address climate change. It eviscerates disaster movie tropes and the institutions that fail to stand up to the greater good of humanity. Adam McKay makes some some missteps in his direction screenplay, but overall, outlined, driven by an incredible cast. Of course, Leo DiCaprio is in it. You gotta watch it. The Unforgivable. It means well and is acted nobly, but the result is a... It's kind of a mess. I'm sorry. Bullock C's didn't deliver on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not the Bullock C's. Skip this one. Seriously. The Expanse Season 6 ends well in part because it doesn't try to provide a true ending to the conflicts it explored in Season 6. Instead, it just spends a little more time with a cast of fantastic characters who can offer a little more hope for humanity by always having each other's backs. 
definitely a story of Ryder dies in here. So please, if you haven't watched The Expanse season six, check that out. And finally, we have Being the Ricardos, a film about different things that end up about more of nothing. Aaron Sorkin's Being the Ricardos is visually inert and features a emotionally stifled performance by Nicole Kidman as the lively Lucille Ball. Javier Bardem brings energy to Desi Arnaz, but isn't enough to pick up the disjointed pieces off the floor. My wife went to see this one. Hopefully, she's not too disappointed by the review. And uh, yeah, hopefully y'all aren't either. Check everything out that I mentioned here. Now, the Video Game Awards were this week. They were streamed everywhere. Shout out to everybody who was a affiliate and got to stream it themselves. Shout out to y'all. So let's go over the winners. Deathloop won for Best Game Direction and Best Art Direction, one of the dopest games out there. As far as eSports goes, Beth at Best Athlete went to Simple, Best Coach went to Kokomo, and Best Game and Event went to League of Legends in their 2021 championship. The best team is the Natus Versine CSGO. Kena Breach of Spirits, that's my wife's name, hey baby. <laughs> best indie debut and best indie game. So that was awesome right there. And It Takes Two was best family game, best multiplayer game, and also took home the coveted game of the year. Now as reveals go, a lot of stuff was dropped during the video game award. So here's a quick rundown of some of the things we saw. Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss help officially reveal The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal Engine experience. The best part? It's out now, free. Yes, baby. Free 99 for PS5 and Xbox Series X owners. Star Wars Eclipse is the first video game set in the High Republic era and is being developed in collaboration with Quantic Dream and Lucasfilm Games. It promises a multi, a multiple character branch narrative game and is an early development as we speak. Remedy Entertainment fans have finally had their wish granted. Alan Wake 2 is on the way, baby. This new survivor horror game is going to be, and according to Remedy Stands Lake, a pretty scary experience. But you gotta wait a little while because this game is coming out in 2023. I know. <laughs> now, Warner Brothers Games has announced a Wonder Woman game, right? A new game from Middle Earth Shadow of Modar and Shadow of War Monolith's producer starring the DC iconic hero. While no release date was given, we did get a cinematic reveal trailer on what this new woman is going to look like. And it looks pretty badass, if I may say so myself. The Game Awards also impatiently presented Elder Ring, a new story trailer that focuses on a war between demigods who fight to gain control of the Elder Ring. Fortunately for fans, Elder Ring is going to be released in two months, February 25th, 2022. Let's go. Let's go, baby. And after multiple teases, Game Awards finally gave us a look at Rocksteady's Suicide Squad. We got some gameplay footage, people. Despite it getting no release date beyond 2022, we get to see how all four playable characters, that's King Shark, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, and Deadshot will look in action. Looks quite amazing. Master Chief has taken on the greatest threats the galaxy has thrown at him with ease, but now he has to take things to television. The Game Awards gave us a first trailer at the Halo TV series coming to Paramount Plus in 2022. And for those wondering, Pablo Schreiber will be the one to bring Master Chief to life. And finally, people, we had Jim Carrey and Ben Schwartz both help present the official trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And new footage finally showed the film's take on both Miles, Tails Prowler, and Knuckles the Achenda. Yo, Knuckles is bad ass. Let me tell you, like, <laughs> I have, yo, like the first time I saw the trailer for Sonic the Hedgehog, the, the first movie, I was like, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be cool. This, I, I'm, I'm gonna go see it. But yo, why am I like super geeked for Sonic 2? Like that trailer, I was like, yo, my man's like, why do I, you think I need your power? Like, yo, I'm geeked. I'm geeked. I cannot wait to see this movie. It is going to be dope. Y'all check out all the other footage that was revealed at the Game Awards and check out the other winners as well at IGN.com. Now let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man. You come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. 
there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. Let's hop right into it. The pull list this week. Berserker 6. What revelations will be unlocked when his handler's life hangs in the balance? During a mission to retrieve an artifact from a museum in the midst of an ongoing civil war, B saves his handler, Jim, from a chopper explosion. As he races to get his gravely injured friend to the attraction point, B reveals new secrets from his past. But little does he know that Caldwell and Diana are secretly recording everything. This book has been a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Hulk number two. Ooh, this is a good one. Bruce Banner finally has total control with the Hulk locked away. But with a tight grip on his plans, Bruce forgot one thing. Variables can happen at any time. And this one, even Bruce couldn't have imagined. The craziness continues as the Hulk hurls farther into space, but he is not alone out there. <laughs> is he ever alone in space? Is anyone ever alone in space at this point? Robin and Batman number two. Dick Grayson is struggling in his training to be Robin, and the Batman decides the young man needs a break and takes him to meet the Justice League. <gasps> wow. An awe-inspiring moment, he meets the world's greatest heroes and their sidekicks. Will these teen titans get along? <laughs> See what I did there? It, okay, moving on. Uh, King Spawn number five. Dope book. Dope book. The predictions of the one they call the Oracle begin to come true. Spawn must now face a group of angels bent on the destruction of everything in its path, including God himself if need be. This book is getting epic. No Holes Barred, number one. When King, Queen Elizabeth I is kidnapped, only, dr only the dramatic duo of William Shakespeare and William Page and their superhero alter egos, the Bard and Page, can save her. Written in ambient parameter, No Holes Barred is a throwback to comedy adventure 400 years in the making. This is a very, very interesting book. Please, y'all, this one is going to be one to get next week. And finally, we have Batgirls number one. Um, hello, you didn't actually think we were going to keep you waiting the entire year for giving you Batgirl series. We've all been waiting for it forever, right? This is the premise, y'all. It's not my words. <laughs> now, we have Batgirls, Cassandra Kane, and Stephanie Brown, who are only able to navigate the dark, gritty, and oftentimes scary city of Gotham by leaning on the bright light in their best friendship. Mentored by the Oracle, the Batgirls move to their one side of town where Barbara Gordon can keep an eye on them better while the hacker Seer is still invading their lives. Splashing the pages with bright colors against a dark backdrop of Gotham Knights, Batgirls is a pizza slumber party of the year you don't want to miss. This is going to be a cute book. Definitely one that I think that uh, little girls everywhere will like and maybe little boys too. Who knows? But this is a little cute book here. Check this one out and also any other comics this Wednesday at your local comic book store. Now for source wall news, Destiny of X, Marvel reveals the X-Men's second Krakoan age. Marvel is giving X-Men readers a closer look at the franchise's next major evolution. 2022's This Destiny of X will introduce a new wave of X-Men comics and a major status quo change for mutant kind. Destiny of X is the latest chapter in the ongoing saga that began in 2019 with House of X and Power of Ten. In fact, Marvel press release builds storyline at the start of the second Krakoan age. While plot details are being kept under wraps for now, we do know Destiny X builds directly on the fallout of Inferno and the twin miniseries 10 Lives of Wolverine and 10 Deaths of Wolverine. The former servers of writers, John Hickman's final title, Final X-Men Tale, wrapping up many of the Maura McTaggart-related loose ends from House of X and Power of X. The latter two books follow Wolverine as he embarks on a dangerous quest across time with the fate of Krakoa at stake. Now, this teaser image is something serious. It reveals a number of X-Men comics debuting in 2022 alongside current titles like X-Men, Marauders, X-Force, New Mutants, and Wolverine. Those include the Immortal X-Men, X-Men Red, Legion of X, and Knights of X. That lineup doesn't include other smaller scale new books like the Sabretooth Limited series and the one-shot special Secret X-Men number one. Now, Marvel has yet to reveal stories or creative teams for any of the new books, but we can make certain educated guesses. 
One of them, a mortal X-Men, marks a former X-Men writer Kieran Gillian's return to the franchise for the first time in years. This new series is billed to compare the flagship X-Men title, one focused on, de- on deepening power struggles with the Cohen Quiet Council. A trial of Magneto's Lucas Wernerick will draw the series. These are going to be incredible titles. I cannot wait to read all of these. I love me some X-Men. If you grew up in the late 80s, early 90s reading comics, X-Men was your jam. Please, please, y'all, keep an eye out for this one. It's going to be epic. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, you couch potatoes and you bingers. Netflix has canceled Cowboy Bebop. Apparently, after one season, the live action series that saw John Cho, Danielle Pineda, and Mustafa Shakir as Spike Spiegel, Jet Black, and Faye Valentine has been given the axe. With the series being received to mixed reviews, but still hitting the top of the charts for the streaming service, a new report for The Hollywood Reporter seems to confirm the new live action take has been cut short by the streaming service, bringing to an end the current stories of the bebop and the wild world they inhabited. I blame, I blame y'all, like, <laughs> I blame you die hard anime fans, because y'all complained to the point where it was just like, okay, now I don't even want to watch it, you know what I mean? It's like, if the hardcore fans just completely dismissed it, why would any casuals want to hop on that thing? So, yeah, I blame y'all. <laughs> I sincerely blame y'all. But we'll see what happens, and um, maybe they'll get picked up somewhere else. Who knows? I doubt it, but we'll see. Charlie Cox will return as Marvel's Daredevil. It is officially confirmed by the god Kevin Feige himself. He just won't say when we'll see that return. Now, during an interview with Cinema Blend, Feige revealed that fan favorite Charlie Cox will be back as Marvel's Daredevil in the MCU. Quote, if you were to see Daredevil in upcoming things like, oh, I don't know, maybe (laughs) Spider-Man, it would definitely be Charlie Cox portraying Daredevil. But when will he appear? And will his co-stars also be along for the ride? Karen Page, Foggy Nelson, who knows? But with Vincent D'Onofrio as Big Bad Kingpin, you have to wonder when you'll see guys show up because they're definitely hinting at Kingpin popping up in Hawkeye. I can't wait to see Daredevil back on the screen. Definitely hope it's the big screen because... Out of all the series, and you can't deny this, out of all the series that Netflix put out, Daredevil was hands down the best one. Sorry, it just was. Now, the boys' animated series Diabolical has been announced for 2022. Amazon Studios and Sony's Pictures have announced Diabolical, a new eight-episode animated series set in the universe of the boys that will arrive on Prime Video in 2022. The boys star Carl Urban announced a new series at, C- 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 yeah, at CCXP World 2021 and helped reveal a bit about the series that will feature unseen stories within the boys' universe from Aquafina, Garth Ennis, Elliot Glazer, Elion Glazer, Evan Goldberg, and Seth Rogen, Simon Rakapoka, Justin Roiland, and Ben Bathout, Annie Sandberg, and Aisha Tyler. This is going to be dope. I cannot wait. The Shang-Chi sequel confirmed. New MCU Disney Plus series also in the works. Okay, I see what they doing over there. Let's get some more Shang-Chi popping. Let's get the 10 rings going. Uh, Destin Daniel Creighton has inked a new overall deal with Marvel Studios and Hulu's Onyx Collective. And part of that deal is developing not only a theatrical sequel to Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings, but also a Disney Plus series, presumably spinning out of the events of that movie. The filmmaker who directed Shang-Chi, one of the biggest movies of 2021, if not the biggest, was already an upcoming director before joining the Marvel Universe. Now it seems he will spend a little more time over the next few years while also developing programming for Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Who knows, people? We might get a Ten Rings series. I would definitely be down for a Ten Rings series with his sister. Oh my god, that would be nuts. That would be so, so dope. Yes, give me that. Give me all of that. 
And finally, Star Wars The Acolyte reportedly finds its star in The Hunger Games' Amanda Steinberg. The future of the Star Wars franchise is expected to be expanded in some major ways on Disney+, Plus, with a number of live-action and animated projects set in a galaxy far, far away. Among them is Star Wars The Acolyte, a live-action series that will be set in the tail end of the High Republic era, a point in time that is currently being explored in the comics and novels. The series was first announced to be in the works over a year ago, with the production rumored to begin sooner than later. Fans have been curious about any updates around the series. Luckily, we got one in Variety reporting that Amanda Stanberg is in talks to join the Acolyte in its lead role. Now, you all familiar with her from the... Um, as Rue from Hunger Games, also in her stellar performances from The Hate You Give and The Darkest Minds. While details surrounding her role are unknown, we know the Acolyte will be a martial art influenced mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic. The series is being showrun by Russian Doll and sleeping with other people alum Leslie Headland. Yo, let's get it. I'm loving this. Black actresses getting their stuff getting their shine on it's star wars we got martial arts it's the high republic let's go let's hop into thumb life peace love and video games that's all like donkey kong yeah. <laughs> that man is playing galaga All right, gamers, one piece of news, but it is a doozy. GTA Online is getting a Franklin expansion story set five years after GTA. Now, Rockstar announced that GTA Online will be receiving a story-focused expansion called The Contract. It is set to be released on December 15th in a single-player campaign and will focus on Franklin working in his new Celebrity Solutions Agency and will feature Dr. Dre, who has composed new music for the game. Announced on the Rockstar Newswire, the expansion includes F. Clinton and Partner, an agency offers solutions for the problems of Los Angeles' Los Santos' elite. Your DTA Online character will meet Franklin through Lamar Davis and will be tasked with taking the business to the next level. As part of that story, GTA 5 radio host DJ Pooh will contact Franklin to mention a potential client, Dr. Dre. Dre has lost his phone, which is full of unreleased new music. You'll be tasked with securing the tracks and returning them to legendary artists, and you can do this solo or with a crew. Rockstar teases you'll be working with Franklin himself, Chop the Dog, and a hacker called Imani to travel from Franklin's old neighborhood to Los Santos parties to FBI, FIB offices to receive the tracks. As you can see from the trailer, and it's a dope trailer, y'all. We'll be meeting famous guest artists too, like Anderson Pack and Snoop Dogg. Yo, this looks dope. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. This is gonna be one that we definitely wanna play. Even though it's still GTA 5, I am still quite excited about it. So when this drops on the 15 people, who knows? You might see your boy drop a review. I don't know yet. Okay, nerds, let's mark out. So what you gonna do? All right, people, for mark out news, uh, it's a bit of a sad one here. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, Jeff Hardy has been released from WWE. Now, Jeff Hardy has been uh, released from his contract, as reported by Fightful Select. The former WWE champion made headlines over the past weekend when he took part in a six-man tag team match in Edinburgh, Texas, only to leave the match by exiting through the crowd. Reports of Hardy being seen from WWE's tour began to spread quickly as he was replaced on cards from WWE's Corpus Christi event on that Sunday night. He was described as having a rough night, and his brother Matt Hardy offered an update on Monday via his Twitch stream. Quote, I did speak to Jeff a little bit today. He's okay. He's good. I think he'll be fine. Once again, this isn't my business. But if he wants to go into it with more detail, he'll do it himself. Jeff is okay. He's at home. It's not my business to tell his story or explain. Besides that, it's not my story to tell. 
because it's not my perspective. I love my brother and I want him to be in the best health. Now, it's reported also that WWE offered to give Jeff Hardy rehab to get back on a schedule again to be shown on TV and also go on tour, but Jeff Hardy refused. And because of his refusal, it is why he was released from his contract. Now, this sucks on multiple levels. One, it's just, it's hurtful a little bit to see that, you know, one of your heroes or just, you know, a wrestler you admire destroying themselves in one way or another and that definitely does hurt um but we definitely hope jeff gets better he gets the uh the time and the i guess treatment or whatever he needs to get better it it, it sucks that this is the way he had to get from up under wwe and shout out to wwe for even offering him rehab they didn't have to do that they did turn it down it is what it is and i don't know I'm not going to start shouting AEW yet. In fact, I don't want to start shouting at all. My main concern is wanting Jeff to get better. Now, if he gets better and he's clean, like for real, for real, maybe he can have a farewell tour in AEW with his brother. But until then, Jeff Hardy, from one Carolinian to another brother, take care of yourself, get better, and hopefully one day we'll see you out there again. But... That is my time. This has been the podcast. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to like this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, comment on this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Follow us on all social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?